Hello everyone and welcome to this week's plugin tutorial. In this one, I'm going to show you how to make each of the various types of plugin properties or parameters that you can have inside of your plugin. I'm going to be going over how to create each one of them and uh, the different values you can give them. And I'll also provide the source code down below in the description so you can check it out for yourself. Before we get started with this video, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And down in the description, you can check us out on GitHub again, where this code will be located. Follow us there for coding updates and in the description as well, follow us on Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member of the Discord server, make sure you join to get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, UXP plugins, submit tutorial ideas, and hang out with our knowledgeable members. And you can also support us on YouTube by becoming a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP. Link for that is in the description. Also, also you can check out my stuff on AE Scripts and Adobe Exchange, also in the description down below. All right, so we're going to be creating an angle, a button, a checkbox, a color, a slider, a layer, a property, uh, a point control, a 3D point control, and a topic. These are the base elements that you can create. Um, of course, there are a few variations to these. For example, there are several variations of sliders. You can have float sliders, or you can have 0 to 255 sliders, just very specific ones. Um, so there are some slight variations of these, but we're going to be going over the general way to create all of them. Of course, there are some custom uh, type of things you can create in UIs for your plugin, but today's tutorial is specifically to go over the built-in ones uh, that create the default types. So let's go ahead and clear up all of our existing uh, parameters here and just start with our AEFX clear struct def, which we need before every single UI element that we declare in order to make sure it uh, is accounted for and appears properly. Also in the H file of this, we're also going to be using these disk IDs. I have a disk ID and uh, another enumeration for each of our types of elements so that we can use them when uh, inside of our param setup. If you are newer to plugins, params setup is where we set up the UI for our plugin, which must match, and that has to match uh, the number of parameters in your plugin have to match the number of these enumerations we set up. So firstly, let's create an angle. To create any of these, we start off with pf underscore add, and then it's going to give us a full list of all the possibilities. As you can see, there's several types of sliders and a whole bunch of different kinds, but we're going to start with an angle. Then when we hit the first parentheses, it's going to display the properties that we need to give it. We need a name, a default, and an ID. So for a name, we can just say my angle. A default is the default value, so maybe we want the default to be 90 degrees. And then the ID is again what we define inside of our skeleton.h uh, file. So in this case, I have angle underscore disk underscore ID. I'm going to paste that in. And now we have our first element. Now let's just go ahead and go through and create the rest of the type of elements. And then we can launch the plugin because we will have an error if the number of parameters don't match this. So we can't just say, check out it with an angle when we have all these other ones defined. So next, let's actually just copy the remaining ones we need right there. And I'll comment it out so that we can just go ahead and work on the next ones. So again, we're defining another type of parameter. We need to use our clear struct. And next, we're going to create a button. So pf underscore add button. And then the first thing we need is our parameter name. We can just say my button. The button name is actually a little bit different. The button name is what actually goes inside of the button. And the parameter name is what goes next to it. So we can just say button text. Uh, then you can have some special flags, which we're going to have for null. All the flags we're going to use as null just because um, we're just wanting to create the elements here, nothing extra. And then that should be well defined. Now that we have our button, let's just move on. We'll go pf underscore add checkbox. And we need a name A and a name B. The name A is the text that would appear on the left of your checkbox. The name B is what will appear on the right side of it. So we can do two if we want. We can say left and uh, right uh, default value of your checkbox we can say true to have it checked or false to have it unchecked we'll say null for the flags and then here's our disk id we'll paste another clear struct and now we'll say pf underscore add and we're going to now add a color first we need a name for our color we'll just say my color and then we need a red green and blue 
this needs to be in the range of 0 to 255. So if I wanted to say pure blue, I could say 0, 0, 255. And then we need an ID. Now another clear struct. Let's create a slider. Say pf underscore add. Uh, we have actually multiple choices of sliders. We have a 255 slider, which would be good specifically for just making sure your values are between 0 and 255, maybe as like a color control uh, for the different channels. But we also have an exponential slider, a uh, fixed slider, a float slider, and a float slider X, and a float slider disabled. For the most part, I like to use a float slider X. This gives us quite a few properties to adjust like the minimum and maximum values of our slider. Um, but if you need more properties like a curve tolerance or an exponential slider, you can use those as well. We're just going to get our name here, my slider, a valid minimum. This could be in the negatives or a, a small positive number or a large positive number. We could say negative 100. Um, and because this is a float, we can make it a decimal. Uh, a valid max, we could say 100.0. And then the slider min and slider max. I usually just set these to be the exact same as the, uh, the valid min and valid max, just to make sure they're uh, supporting each other there. And then the default is the default value that will be displayed for your slider. Precision, we then can say pf uh, precision in the integer, tenths, hundredths, thousands, or tens of thousands of precision. In this case, let's just do tenths. Uh, then we'll say null and null for these other two arguments and copy and paste our slider disk ID. Next after slider, we have layer. Now for a layer, this is just going to allow us to select a layer to reference and we need a name, my layer, uh, a default value. Just give this an index of what layer you want to be uh, selected as default, the layer index, and then a simple ID, uh, which will be our layer disk ID. Next, we're going to create a point control. So we'll say add point. And then for this, we just need a name, my point. And this is a 2D point. So we need to give it an X and a Y value. Uh, we can just say 1920 by 1080. And then if you want, you can restrict the bounds. In my case, I'm just gonna set that to null and I'll paste my point disk ID. Then we can also create a three dimensional version of this. To do that, we'll simply say pf underscore add. And this time we're going to add a point 3D. I'm gonna give it a name, my point 3D. And this time we're gonna give it an X, Y, and Z value because that is how the third dimension works. We need our Z value and then our ID. Now, lastly, we're going to create a topic. A topic is simply the things inside of a plugin that allow you to uh, basically have it collapse and uncollapse to reveal more uh, options. And you can have topics within topics to create complex structures. Uh, to create a topic, we're going to say, of course, clear our struct. And then we'll say pf underscore add topic. Our topic name, we're just going to say my topic and the ID, you need an ID for the start and the end of your topic. So I'm gonna give it my start ID. And then we're going to say PF underscore end topic. And for this, we just need to provide the end disk ID. Now, the reason I don't need um, a clear struct before my end topic is because we're going to have elements within it first. So if we want to, we can add a slider inside of our topic. I've left a, a space for this. So I'll copy and paste my, uh, my previous slider here and just change the name to topic slider and use our topic slider disk ID. Now, if it's the first element inside of a topic, I like to put a clear struct. I'm not 100% of this, but I've basically found through trial and error that every element needs a clear struct def before it, unless it's the second or higher element of a topic. Um, so in this case, the first element of our topic gets a clear struct. Anything after that, we wouldn't need to have a clear struct. And the end of the topic doesn't as well. So now we've created all of this. Let's go ahead and run it in After Effects and see how it looks. Just load a layer here and select my UI params effect. And you can see we have an angle, a button, a uh, left and right check box text here, a uh, color, a slider, my layer, uh, a layer selection, my point and my point 3D, and our topic.
And that's how we can create each of the basic elements for a plugin. And of course, these will work in your Premiere plugins and After Effects plugins. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And down in the description, you can check out this uh, example code for yourself and try it out and modify it and create your own UI with these elements. Make sure you follow us in the description there on GitHub for coding updates and also down there on Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member of the Discord server, make sure you come and join and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And you can help support us on YouTube in the description by becoming a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP. This comes with cool perks like uh, badges, Discord status, and much more. And you can also check us out on AE Scripts and Adobe Exchange in the description to uh, check out some other products there. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.